SZA, who hurt you? EJ Spark back in the building with another album review today. It's SZA, SOS. SZA dropped her sophomore album on Friday titled SOS, and let me tell you, it sounded like she needed an SOS. This album was quite the roller coaster as SZA time and time again writes about how much heartbreak she has gone through and how much she misses, can't stands, hates, resents her ex. Virtually every song on this thing is either an I hate you, I low key miss you, or I'm so heartbroken I'm going to get with other dudes. And that's the one thing about having 23 songs on an album unless you are a mega fan or very, very much so enjoy every single song, 23 songs is generally too long for an album. This is because either the content can become dry or in this case, the album is a little bit confused in what genre it wants to be. Now, I really respect and enjoy the fact that SZA did try out multiple genres here from R&B to pop to hip hop and she does sound good on every genre that she tries. And because of my long weekend, it really did take about two or three listens to really enjoy this album as a whole because the first listen felt as though the project was a bit all over the place, but that kind of changed with every listen. After listening to it a couple of times, I could really see what SZA and her production team was doing. They really do keep it fresh to have her go in on darker beats like Kill Bill, Low, and Shirt, sure. hot beats like F2F, Nobody Gets Me, Conceited, and Special, which in my opinion is where she was actually strongest throughout this record. SZA's strongest asset, no secret, is her vocal talent, and I think these beats help her showcase that, whether it's belting notes on F2F or really letting her vocals bleed through these instrumentals like on the song special. And I'm not gonna lie, F2F was my favorite song on this thing. It really surprised me how great she sounded on this pop punky type beat, right? It was electric and catchy and I don't really care if SZA fans weren't into this one as much, but this one was really my speed and I thoroughly enjoyed the song. This one was on repeat for a while. Then you have some really amazing hip hop tracks like Smoking On My X Pack and Forgiveless. I thought these songs were really great great and I thoroughly enjoyed them. I thought the vocal chops on Smoking On My X Pack made the song even more soulful and her voice went really well with the beat whether she was rapping on it in the first part of the song or singing on it on the back half. Forgiveless is a straight banger. It's a really good ending to the album I thought. Really makes me want to hear a full hip hop album from SZA. If it were up to me, I would want to hear a straight up pop punk or hip hop or just pop album from her because you know she killed these other genres and honestly I enjoyed these tracks more than her typical R&B style and you can hate that opinion all you want, but that's just my opinion. Overall, I thought the production and vocal talent and melodies on this album is what carried it big time. However, the tracks I weren't feeling as much included the first track, S.O.S., and the song, I Hate You. I felt that S.O.S. wasn't really the strongest opening to this album. I didn't think her rapping on here was as strong as the other couple hip-hop tracks, and I definitely felt the album could have cut SOS out of it. And I Hate You is just more pedestrian, not up to par compared to the rest of the record. It just seemed a bit more tedious to me. SZA's songwriting or her and her team's lyrical ability is what I believe to be the weakest link of this album. Her vocals flow and delivery I thought was incredible throughout the whole project. And that's how SZA shines. We all know that. And if she had some stronger hooks lyrically, I do think this album could have just been that much better. For instance, on Seek and Destroy, the hook says, do it to ya, had to do it to ya, repeated over and over, and that just sounds pretty uninspired to someone of this talent. There's definitely a good amount of personal profound lines on here that a lot of people can connect with, but a lot of them are just surface level heartbreak, I hate you type of lyrics. In my opinion, I would have liked to see some themes and lyrics expand outside of that, especially on a 23 track project. When it comes to the features, I didn't really have a problem with any of them. I think having Don Tal Tolliver sing the hook on Used was a great touch. Don Tolliver is on fire as of recent. Phoebe Bridgers, currently one of my favorite singers, and they showed a lot of chemistry on Ghost in the Machine. I thought that song was damn near perfect. Travis Scott is an interesting one here, though, you know, because I say all the time, you know, Travis, do something different, do a different feature, because a lot of his features have been sounding the same as of late. And now he finally does something different, and you know, he does a good job. Open Arms isn't necessarily a song you would think Travis Scott would fit on. I really do respect the fact that he goes in on a completely different instrumental than what Travis Scott would typically go on. Honestly, I did enjoy his feature. I did think it was pretty vibey, but I do think someone better could have fit that instrumental. Don't really know who, but 
I don't think it was Travis Scott. And the old Dirty Bastard sample, of course, was great. SZA did a great job honoring him. But what I think makes this album so good is that SZA did have a lot of different sounds for a lot of different people. And if you truly enjoy SZA, you loved that this was a 23-track album, and you loved that she went into a bunch of different genres. But if you don't listen to SZA, then she definitely has something for you on this record, whether it's the hip-hop, the pop, the R&B. Sonically, this album is one 100% a roller coaster. And I think although the genres were definitely all over the place, I think it worked to her benefit because honestly, some of the R&B songs can get dry, especially after 23 tracks, but she didn't do that. She mixed in a bunch of different sounds here and it worked really well. I think that SZA met the expectations because coming off of Control, Control was such a great album and this was such a highly anticipated record that she had to hit all these notches, right? And through some basic lyrical short shortcomings and even though the length of the album was long and the genres were a bit all over the place it was an extremely enjoyable listen very smooth vocals from SZA and a lot of catchy and great melodies and sonically she sounds much more mature than Control was I do love seeing this kind of growth from artists and I hope we see more with another album to come I'm going to give this album an 8.1 out of 10 with my favorite songs being Smoking on My X Pack, Ghost in the Machine, F2F, Nobody Gets Me Special and Forgiveless but what are your thoughts did you love this album did you you not like this album do you think it met expectations let me know in the comments below thank you so much for coming by i truly appreciate it if you like the video hit a like and subscribe to the channel if you love making music talking music and listening to music just as much as i do you can follow me on twitch twitter instagram at ej spark one and as always you know what it is it's peace love i love s'mores ej out